Hey, what's going on guys? Hope everyone's doing really, really well. Making a screencast video this week, even though there's no reason for this video to be a screencast, I just didn't have a lot of time this weekend to properly film, edit, and do the production stuff for a regular video video. Um, actually, yesterday I turned 29, so that's my age. Um, today I spent a lot of time resting because... Um, a lot of festivities yesterday but anyways still want to get the weekly content out and talk about some random thoughts on my mind there's no real concrete um, topic for this video but the theme is just random thoughts I had regarding programming and hopefully it addresses still a lot of recurring questions that have been asked so I take notes for a lot of these things for videos every time um, you guys ask questions I actually keep notes for ideas but there's still a bunch of recurring questions that I want to address in this video and it's going to be a little bit of a kitchen sink but I like making these screencasts every now and then because it tests my speaking actually. I don't have the luxury of doing the production editing so I'm trying to do this in one cut which is actually a little difficult. So anyways hopefully it turns out smooth and let's just start with the stuff. So I had two major thoughts in this video and the first thought is just regarding words and I feel like some people are caught up in words often and the the too long don't read of this whole thing is I wouldn't dwell too much about words but if I really had to answer how to use words properly in this whole programming tech industry type of thing this is what I think all right so programming or coding is a skill that's what you should consider it as it's purely just a skill while something like software developer or software engineering or software engineer is a title all right so one distinction that I think is really good to make is always distinguish a title from a skill and finally words like computer science computer engineering information systems these are fields of study all right so these are what majors or like maybe a whole class is going to be labeled something like this but anyways I thought first I just wanted to group these words together all right because still the number one question people ask is like what's what's a software developer versus a software engineer or all these small differences and for just like that question software developer software engineer I think it's the same all right just to be clear so let me just give a few examples of this um, there are many different types of software developers. I made a video on this where I tried, I made like 13 different types of software developers from what I've seen so far. There's probably many, many more, but there are many types of software developers. And they might actually have different titles too, but they, they're all software developers. And each different type requires uh, different backgrounds. All right, so just a quick example. An embedded software developer needs to understand computer systems and hardware versus a web application software developer needs to understand HTTP and the internet. All right, so many different software developers, each of them requires different background knowledge. So hopefully that's clear. Um, lastly, regarding programming or coding, like the, you're not a programmer or coder. That's not really a real job title. All right. You can't, people that say they're like a coder, it's just, it's not really a good description of what you actually do. People with these different titles, they can use coding on their job, right? But that's not the only skill they have. Coding is a skill, and it's just like one of many skills you're going to have. Um, one thing I thought of was just a software developer will always need to know how to code. But maybe a biology scientist might also use coding to help analyze their experimental data or something. So coding is a skill. Like a scientist could know how to code, just like a software developer also knows how to code. But obviously the software developer is going to do it a little better. But long story short is I wouldn't think too hard about these things. Um, I still think so many people ask about the the subtleties or whatever, the, the little differences with all these words, but there's not too much to think about, all right? It's just try to keep it simple. Um, with that said, I still want to touch briefly on 
thought like my thoughts on how to learn how to program and this is still another really popular question that's asked it's kind of like hey what book should I get what's the best program to use or what are the best courses to take like how do I best learn how to go about programming and there's so many different ways I think maybe um, there's maybe a small fear of learning how to do this the right way because there these days there's so many ways to learn how to program um, but in the end just like anything I would say you just do it and I feel a lot of people might be slightly frozen because they're trying to learn the fastest way possible the best way possible the the right way possible but they end up just being a little like frozen and not learning how to progress because there's so many options of progressing so um, my two cents on this is actually just do it because even if you pick a not so good way you just figure out that's not the best way for you to learn programming and then you can move on to a different method that might suit you better because there's so many different ways not every way or every medium of learning is going to work for you so you have to also spend some time and figure out what's going to work for you um, I just put down a few things here I've talked about this before but still there's so many ways to learn the skill of programming but these are just like seven potential ways you could go about learning it all right and it's just seven straight things i'm not going to spoon feed anything i'm not going to give links to any books i'm not going to give links to any programs these are just like different ways and hopefully after hearing this you do the research yourself to figure out how to best go about it so um oh, one thing before we get into this is that i know some of these are a little different some people might have the luxury of having money or going to a school so I want to give a full spectrum of how they're different also from a monetary perspective because I know you know people don't have access to all these things in all the different situations so um, first um, it's just going to be online courses and some of these are cost money but the majority of these online courses are free and they just take some time and self-discipline to complete so if you don't have the luxury of maybe going into an accredited programming I still think the online courses are good because they are structured um, and especially when you're first learning I personally think that when you're first starting out you do need a little bit of structure or else you're just going to be everywhere you're not going to know what's the best thing to learn so I'm not going to tell you what online courses to use I would say first try the ones that come out of the best schools like try Harvard's online courses or try MIT's Harvard um, MIT's courses so these are available to a certain extent from some top institutions and just check those out too all right let's keep going self-directed projects is just getting as hands-on as possible and getting some practice doing projects on your own a good way to actually do this especially for web programming um, I would go to the websites of many boot camps like I know there's one boot camp it's called app Academy and they always do like the same two or three projects all the time and you can take some of those projects and just try it yourself like try to recreate a simple version of Twitter or try to recreate a simple blog or recreate a, a dating application um, a lot of the projects um, or that could be self-directed all you have to do when you're doing this it's more of a portfolio learning thing so just take something that exists and make your own version of it like if you were going to make Twitter on your by yourself with your current skill set just make Twitter so that's kind of a self-directed project the third thing I have is more of a this is learning kind of forcing yourself to learn the foundations of computer science and computers uh, a cool way of preparing for it as if you're doing an interview so one really good interview and thing to search for is how to prepare for interview at Google and this is so popular because Google probably gets the most software applicants in the whole world but there's so many notes and resources specifically around how to prepare for an interview at Google like what are the questions they ask what are the topics they go over like what do you have to know it talks about just it goes into those computer science theories and like you might not think this is like this is probably not equivalent to you know getting the whole foundation from a school but if you force yourself to prepare for a programming or tech interview you will get a good level of foundation so just 
even if you're not interviewing, like pretend you have an interview with Google and do whatever you need to prepare for it. And that's another cool way of learning. Um, fourth, I would say scrape the internet. And what I mean by scrape the internet is kind of what you're doing right now. Just use whatever resource you have as possible. Like I hope that like my videos, for example, are a good resource for many people trying to find holes in their knowledge or trying to just get into this. But that's just my videos and my take on things. So every there's so many people out there with their opinions on how to learn. But just this is a personal thing. Scrape the internet and find out where you have holes in your knowledge and f just dig yourself. You know, the internet is the internet and it's there for you all the time unless the world explodes. Uh, finally, uh, numbers five, six, seven are a little, I guess, more serious. It takes some life consideration to, like, you have to take more things into consideration when you think about these. But five is potentially try to get a position near software developers. Like one of my previous jobs, we had a bunch of um, analysts, I guess, who weren't really software developers, but they're actually like students, not from an engineering background, but who are still really interested in software and. A lot of companies still need like analysts or data entry level people, but those are some open opportunities to work near software developers or work inside tech. So if you're just trying to be like an entry level software developer, but maybe that's you have the chicken and egg problem of you can't get in before you have the experience, there's actually a lot of positions out there where you can get close to um, or near software developers. and that could be a good opportunity for you. Um, number six, I would say, uh, talked about this so many times, but just if you have the money to go into a boot camp or the accelerated program that gives you the real hands-on knowledge of programming in the real world, that's what they try to do. I, uh, the story of I know somebody who knows somebody did a four-month boot camp and works as a software developer in Uber. So. That's an extreme case. I don't know if you can work at Uber after spending four months of coding, but just letting you know it's it's possible. Um, finally, last but not least, this is personally the route I went, and I'm lucky enough to have gone on this route, and I think um, it worked well, but if you can, this is gonna take time and money, but just getting into a four-year program, or even like maybe a shorter program, a two-year program, but getting into a program is always a solid, consistent way of learning how to program because not only does it force you to do it, like if you're fronting a lot of money or taking out a lot of loans to do a program, that's what you're gonna be doing, right? This stuff, one through four, is like self-motivation. You have to be very disciplined to do this yourself versus if you're going to school for engineering, you're going to school and you have no choice, right? So obviously this takes a lot of you have to consider your situation for number seven, but this might be the most consistent way to learn how to code, but not the only way. Um, so with that said, the long story short is that so many people ask about how to learn programming and you just have to start doing it, but don't be afraid to do it the wrong way because you'll just learn what doesn't work for you. Like maybe you try to do mock interviews to prepare for interview but if that just doesn't work just stop doing it and pick another way to learn how to program all right so um i just feel like a lot of people have emailed me and they're just like frozen because they don't they want to do it the best way but they're so caught up in that that they aren't progressing at all so those are my thoughts on that um anyways guys that's the video um kind of freestyled this video Hope it turned out okay. Um, no, again, this is practice for me to try to like execute or portray my thoughts as clearly as possible without the scripting or cutting. I usually actually cut my videos and do a lot of retakes because I mess up the words. So actually I need to practice speaking more clearly and not F up too many times. So hopefully this quick video was helpful and just my opinion over some of the most common questions I've been asked and hope you enjoy it. All right, so I'll catch everyone next time.